You've got physicsy things in front of you. I have got physicsy things in front of me. I've got a, also got a paper I'm hugely, hugely excited about. Um, unfortunately, not from our group. I really wish I could say it was from our group. We've been interested in this type of thing for, for many years. So as you can see, it says autonomous scanning probe microscopy in situ tip conditioning through machine learning. And this is from Bob Walco's group uh, in the uh, University of Alberta. And it's a phenomenal piece of work. Um, why I think it might be of interest to a computer file audience, it could also be of interest to a 60 symbols audience, but for this in particular, it's they're basically controlling the atomic structure of matter through machine learning. So it's really the interface between physics and computer science. First of all, it's all about scanning probe microscopy. Now, I think we've talked a little bit about scanning probe microscopy, but in essence, what we have is a sharp tip, preferably atomically sharp, with one atom sticking out the end. And that sounds really difficult to do, but it's in practice not that difficult to do. What is difficult to control is just how many atoms stick out the end and the arrangement of the atoms at the end. And that is really the bane of any scanning probe microscopist's life. But let's say we've managed to create this. We've got one atom sticking out the end. Here's our surface, here's our sample. You bring it in and you move it so you're almost at the touching point, sometimes even at the contact point, whereby you have a very small separation between the, the tip and the sample. So what we have is our sharp tip, we bring it in really close to the surface and we do that using piezoelectric crystals, actually those barbecue lighter things that you use where you click at the end, piezoelectric crystals in those. So you bring it in really close within an atomic diameter or so and then you move it across the surface. And what you're picking up on is the interaction of that atom right at the end of the tip with the atoms at the surface. So you move back and forth, back and forth, and build up an image that way. It's a slow process, but it's a process that is incredibly precise, and we sacrifice speed for that precision. And the other great thing is because it's a probe, as well as imaging, what you can do is you can deliberately try to manipulate the surface. So you can bring the tip in, bond, and try to pluck atoms out, for example. Or if there are atoms absorbed in the surface, you can try and slide them, move them across. And we're now at the point where, in many cases, we can slide atoms at will across the surface to spell out different patterns, but, but, and there's a big but. As I said, the key thing here with scanning probe microscopy is controlling the structure at the end of the probe. And so we'll start off, we will take our tip, and the way we create our tip, the first stage in creating the tip is we put it into a solution, solution of sodium hydroxide. I know this is chemistry of the computer file audience, bear with me. You etch it down to a sharp point, but that's not good enough. Generally, it's not good enough. Then you put it in your vacuum system, you move it in, you'd like to be able to see atoms, but most of the time you don't see atoms. So what do you do? Well, you apply a little voltage pulse to try and jiggle the atoms around at the end of the probe. Or you apply an increase in the current, and that can lead to effects which will move the atoms around at the end of the probe. That doesn't work, you crush it gently in. That doesn't work, you crush it a little bit further in. That doesn't work, you drive it in half a millimetre or so and push it around and try to, try to jiggle it around. How do you know if it's worked? Very, very good question. You go, does this image look good? <laughs> really? Yeah. What we really want to have is as an image whereby what we're seeing is the structure of the surface and that this has as little influence as possible. So what we really want to do is have as sharp a probe as possible because, for example, if we have a probe that looks like this, where we've got a flat plane where each one of these atoms will, could potentially contribute to the image. That can lead to very confusing images because you've got multiple different imaging centers. Let's say we have something like this. So it comes in like this to the surface where you've got an atom here and an atom here. And both of those can contribute to the image. And sometimes it'll be tilted slightly and this one can contribute more because it's closer to the surface, but this one can still contribute. It's reasonably close to the surface. So those are double tip images. They're the bane of the scanning probe microscopist's life because really what you want to do is to get right down to that atomic level. At the moment, what happens is students, postdocs, researchers sit in the lab and they, they literally just trial and error push the tip into the surface, apply voltage pulses, try and coerce it into the state they want. And it's a massive bottleneck, massive, massive bottleneck, when in fact what we'd want is a, a sort of auto-tune or an auto-focus button, where you get to the end of the day, you've, you've exper your experiments might have worked okay, but perhaps your tip is not in a good state, and you want to press a button which is optimized probe and go home and then come in the morning and do your proper experiments instead of driving yourself to distraction, just pushing the tip into the surface to try and change the, the structure of the tip. And that's been a long time coming. Scanning probe microscopy has been around since the early 80s and we're still at that level. Many, and Nottingham's no different. Many, many groups are still at that level where it's a, you know, a PhD student in their second year literally banging their head against the table going, please work. 
that's why this paper is so important and it's 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 really nice so what they've done they've trained a convolutional neural net and there are many many good videos about neural nets and convolutional neural nets on computer file mike pound has done a, a number of, of really good videos i thoroughly recommend them that's what they've used they've managed to train it to distinguish between when it's got a double tip and when it's got a proper single atom tip and they've gone that extra step and they've modified the probe so that it will recover the structure you need to get a good single atom image as it were. This is a really big leap forward and for me it's, it's really exciting. I'm slightly disappointed that we didn't get that. We've been working on this type of problem for, for a number of years. Actually another good reason why um, it's good to do a computer file video on this actually with computer scientists here in Nottingham and a number of years back we tried to employ what are called evolutionary al algorithms or genetic algorithms to try to tune the probe that way it worked okay it didn't work particularly well all the time and the way to go obviously the next step the next evolutionary stage in that was to go to the machine learning side of things and I actually had a summer intern working on this last year but we just as I said we were beaten to pip to the post the great thing is is where it can go because they've, they've controlled the probe and they've been going for a particular atomic resolution but actually sometimes particularly if you want to do chemistry oh, let's use this one actually sometimes that, that atom sticking out the end is what you need but sometimes what you might actually need, just in terms of the chemistry and the arrangement of the electrons, if you really want to manipulate atoms, if you want to do chemistry, computer controlled chemistry, you might actually need a structure a bit more like this, in terms of how it bonds and how it interacts with the surface. The next step in this is to not just give us a good tip, give us a tip with our particular structure, give us a tip with a particular state, and then we are really not just controlling matter at the atomic level, we're controlling it right down to the single chemical bond level. And in fact, we're controlling it right the the quantum mechanical structure of the tip. When we go a little bit further along these lines, you know, can we actually just tell it we wanted to build something like that? We just wanted, you know, can we get the, the computer to, to, as long as that's within the laws of physics, that's our blueprint, you know, and that might be a chunk of silicon. Can we actually get it to build that? If you're calibrating a camera, there are various test images that you can use to, to calibrate it yep. from, yeah. be it white balance or focus or whatever. Is there an equivalence in this? That's effectively what they're doing. When, when they talk about a single tip versus a double tip, this is a probe, this is a sample. So what we, we'd like is that the radius of curvature, the sharpness of this, is smaller than the object we're actually imaging at the surface. So if we do that, we, we'll, as we trace it across, we'll map out um, uh, an image of what's happening at the surface. However, that's just, by symmetry, exactly equivalent to that. So if you have a relatively blunt tip, like a double tip, or like a triple tip or a quadruple tip or a cluster and you've got something sharp at the surface like a single atom or a single bond that sticks out of the surface then what will happen is that this will image this so this is our test structure to come and to, to, to map it across to the video uh, process this is our test structure this is allowing us to see what's happening at the end of the probe and that's exactly what they're doing in this they have single bonds which are sticking out the surface when they see these sort of ghost-like images it's telling us about the structure of the tip rather than the structure of the surface and then they control it accordingly so this is or control it's built into the experiment and you expose the plastic at the surface in particular regions according to the pattern and the important thing is when the, this particular polymer is exposed to light it becomes soluble the, the regions